Hi friends and welcome to Storytime. Today's story is Nate the Great and the Fishy Prize by Marjorie Wyman Charmitt, illustrated by Mark Simont. It's a quite a long book, so we're gonna split it into two parts. This is part one. Nate the Great and the Fishy Prize. I, Nate the Great, am a detective. I solve important cases that do important things. This morning I was doing something very important. I was at the supermarket buying dog shampoo for my dog, Sludge. Today, Sludge was going to be in a contest in the park to choose the smartest pet in the neighborhood. I, Nate the Great, knew that Sludge was the smartest and the dirtiest. I wanted Sludge to be a clean winner. I bought dog shampoo and flour, eggs, butter, milk, salt, sugar, and baking powder to make pancakes. I like pancakes. I bought so many things that the grocery bag bulged open. I put the bag in the basket on the back of my new bicycle and started to ride home. I, rose pa I rode past Rosamond's house. Strange noises were coming from inside her house. I wondered what was happening, but I kept my eyes straight ahead to see where I was going. Besides, strange noises were the right kind of noises to come from Rosamond's house because Rosamond is strange. When I got home, Sludge was waiting for me. I bought you some shampoo, I said. Sludge did not think that was good news. Sludge hates baths. I put the grocery bag on the floor and before I could unpack it, the telephone rang. Rosamond was calling me. She said, I am in charge of making the prize for the smartest pet contest. I know that, I said. I, Nate the Great, hated to think what the prize would be. Well, I made the prize, but it disappeared, Rosamond said. What was it, I asked. It was an empty tuna fish can with the word smartest hand painted on it in big gold letters, Rosamond said. Any pet would love to have it, but now it's gone. You will have to make another prize, I said. It's too late, Rosamond said. The contest starts in an hour. Will you look for the tuna fish can? I have to get sludge ready for the contest, I said. But there won't be a contest unless you find the prize, Rosamond said. I looked at sludge. He looked smart. There had to be a contest. I need the great. We'll take your case, I said. Sludge and I will be right over. I hung up. I said to sludge, we must look for the tuna fish can. There is no time to give you a bath. Sludge thought that was good news. I wrote a quick note to my mother. Dear mother, I am on a fast, fishy case. I will be back. Love, Nate the Great. Sludge and I rushed to Rosamond's house. There was no time to say hello. Show me where the prize was, I said. Rosamond took me to her room. It smelled fishy, and there were things knocked over, and things upside down, and things all over the floor. It was a mess. What happened, I said. Everyone came with their pets to sign up for the contest, Rosamond said. Annie came with Fang. Pip came with his parrot. Finley came with his rat. Oliver came with his favorite eel. Claude came with a pig, and Esmeralda came by herself. She doesn't have any pets, so she's going to be the judge. Well, Fang ran after Claude's pig. The pig ran after my four cats. My cats ran after the rat. Pip's parrot got all excited and flew around and around. Even Oliver's eel got excited. They barked and squawked and oinked and all sorts of things, and they messed up my whole room. Yes, I, Nate the Great, heard all the strange noises when I rode past on my bicycle. But where was the tuna fish can when all this was going on? I had opened the window and put the can on the sill so the gold paint could dry in the air, Rosamond said. When did you notice the can was gone? I asked. Right after the stampede, Rosamond said. Everyone left and I started to clean up the room. That's when I saw that the prize was gone. I looked all over the room for it. I will look again, I said. It could be somewhere in this mess. It must have been knocked off the windowsill. Then perhaps one of those pets, who's supposed to be so smart, pushed or pulled or dragged or kicked it. My cats are smart, Rosamond said. They are all going to win first prize. Rosamond's cats could win first prize for being strange. I, Nate the Great, looked around the room. Did you paint the can in this room? I asked. No, Rosamond said. Good, I am looking for smudges of gold paint. They might be a clue to where the can went. But if you had painted in this room, you could have left the smudges. I don't smudge, Rosamond said. I, Nate the Great, went to the window sill. If I could find smudges of gold paint inside the sill or outside the sill, I could know whether the can went inside or outside. But the can had not left any clues behind. Sludge was sniffing and sniffing. I call. I asked Rosamond, did you wash the tuna fish can before you made it into a prize? Sort of, Rosamond said. Sort of, I said. How do you sort of wash a tuna fish can? My cats licked it, Rosamond said. They do a good job. They love tuna fish, but they don't use soap. I said. That means the prize may still smell fishy. That is a clue. I turned to Sludge. Fishy smell, I said. Sludge and I could not find the can in Rosamond's room. The can is not here, I said. Perhaps it went out the window. Sludge and I rushed outside. We looked around. There was no tuna fish can. There were no smudges of gold paint. There was nothing but a sidewalk. 
We walked back and forth. Perhaps the can had been pushed or pulled or dragged or kicked up the street or down the street, but we could not find anything. We went back inside. This is a very fishy case, I said to Rosamond. The can was on the windowsill, so it had to be knocked inside the house or outside the house, but it isn't inside and it isn't outside. Maybe someone took the can on purpose, Rosamond said. I, Nate the Great, did not want to tell Rosamond that no one would take her tuna fish can on purpose, that it was the dumbest prize for the smartest contest. I'll have to speak to everyone who is in this room, I said. Perhaps someone saw what, hap what happened to the tuna fish can. Sludge and I rushed to Claude's house. Claude was there with a pig. Claude is always losing things. I was glad he had not lost the pig. Claude was brushing the pig's bristles while she ate a big pile of food. I am getting Anastasia ready for the smartest pet contest, Claude said. Anastasia oinked. I watched her eat. The food was disappearing fast. I was thinking. The tuna fish can had completely disappeared. Maybe it had disappeared inside something. One way to make something disappear is to eat it. I, Nate the Great, spoke up. Pigs are supposed to eat like pigs. Would Anastasia eat a tin can? I don't know, Claude said. She's not my pig. She lives on a farm, and I borrowed her for the contest. But I keep losing her. She finds her way back to me. She's smart, and that's why she's going to win the contest. Anastasia oinked again. May I open Anastasia's mouth? I asked. If you really want to, Claude said. I, Nate the Great, did not really want to open Anastasia's mouth, but I had a case to solve. I had a job to do. Slowly, I opened her mouth. Quickly, I closed her mouth. Anastasia did not eat the tuna fish can, I said. How do you know? Claude asked. Because the gold paint on the tin can was wet. Anastasia would have a gold mouth if she ate the can. Tell me, did you see the can on Rosamond's windsill? I saw it and I didn't see it, Claude said. That is an interesting answer, I said. I, Nate the Great, say that is an interesting answer. Well, I saw the can on the windowsill just before everything started. everyone started to run around, Claude said. When it was all over, I didn't see the can anymore. That is an old clue, I said. And that is the end of part one of Nate the Great and the Fishy Prize. Part two, coming up soon.